Hey everyone, this is Ross. We're inside the sunroom for today's video just simply because it's so windy out right now that all that wind is being picked up on the microphone. But I just really need to make this video for you guys. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking me about the fig trees and the upcoming cold temperatures that are coming in um, here in the Northeast. And we're looking at tonight somewhere around 22 degrees and over the next couple days another 22 degree low and 21 degrees uh, this is worrying for a lot of people and it really shouldn't be i think 22 degrees is really not something to really go crazy over um, personally myself i've exposed my potted fig trees down to 14 degrees fahrenheit and none of them took any damage this was last year uh, this was thanksgiving night and because it was Thanksgiving night, I just didn't care. I just said, you know what, it's Thanksgiving night. I'm not gonna worry about this. Uh, but we had a very abrupt, hard freeze that came in on Thanksgiving night that was 14 degrees out here. I measured it. Um, I had a thermometer out here, made sure I was documenting this very carefully. So 14 degrees is what I would consider so far the absolute minimum. But I would suspect that the fig tree can actually survive even a little bit below that. Uh, the issue becomes when you have your fig tree roots are exposed to these cooler temperatures, the roots may start to take damage. It's not necessarily the wood. I would say somewhere around 10 degrees Fahrenheit, most of the varieties, their wood is going to be okay. Um, in fact, I had a Smith tree out here last year on Thanksgiving. And that one's supposed to be one of the least hardy varieties that exists. Like it's, it's very known to be not hardy at all. So many people have issues with it in the, uh, in the winter time. And that one survived 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that's a bit strange, right? I personally believe that the roots are less hardy than the wood. Um, so the roots will probably start to take damage somewhere around 14 degrees 13, 12, somewhere in that range. And if the roots take damage, then the top is gonna to start dying back, right? As any plant, as you guys know, if we kill the roots, we then kill the top. So we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna have our roots be exposed to too cool of temperatures. But I think it's a really good idea to leave them outside during this process. Don't feel like you have to go crazy and get all these things in somewhere it's only 22 degrees, guys. Um, you know, 22 degrees is actually probably the perfect temperature. And we're gonna have a string of these days. It's not just one or two, or it's not just one day. We're gonna have three different days where these lows are gonna really help our fig trees go into dormancy. And by getting them into dormancy, you're just setting yourself up for a better season next year. So I find that if we were to, let's say, prune these trees too early, if we were to root prune these trees too early, if we were to put them away even too early, we're potentially robbing ourselves of some performance next year. You know, if we're cutting off the branches now and there's still sap flow, um, that sap flow is not going to return down to the roots. That's the whole objective of when our tree is completely dormant. The sap flow will return all the way down into these roots. And then in the spring, all that sap flow comes from the roots and goes up into the branches. And the more sap flow, the more carbohydrates that we have, the better off our trees will be. And, you know, figs don't really need a dormancy process. So you, you could say, all right, well, I'm just going to put them in the greenhouse now. I'm going to stick them in there and I'm going to say, forget about it. I just don't want to risk it. Let's just stick them in there. They don't need a dormancy process anyway. That's true, but I do find that if they don't go dormant, which can happen, sometimes your trees just will not go dormant if you don't let them get hit with this hard frost that's gonna come in, you know, somewhere around 20 to 25 degrees. If you don't let them get exposed to that, they may never go dormant. And if they never go dormant, you're missing out on that awesome process that we have. Yeah, they don't need it, right? They don't need the dormancy process, but they certainly benefit from it. And there's a lot of people that grow figs in the tropics. Yeah, you can grow figs in the tropics. They don't get a dormancy period there. They don't see even a frost, right? 
So, uh, you know, those people are able to do it, but I can guarantee you that there's a lot of physiological benefits that these trees go through during that dormancy process. That whole waking up process, the whole going to sleep process, it's really quite beneficial. So if we're robbing our trees of that, I just think it's a horrible idea. You know, and I talked about the lack of sap flow that you guys would be robbing away from your trees. Cause if you're taking off cuttings and there's still sap flow, you're then taking away that sap flow from potentially it going back down into the roots, right? And if you're root pruning when the tree is still awake, you're actually really hurting the tree. Uh, that's a really big no-no. So, um, you know, those are the big things, the big reasons why I suggest you guys do this. Another big reason here that's often overlooked, and this is kind of my own personal theory, my own personal preferences, is that our trees should be stressed. We should be letting them withstand the elements. We don't want to baby our trees at every moment. Every single tree that we have in the ground here, I don't water them. I don't feed them. I let them do their own thing. I let the pests dictate the ecology in my yard. I let the aphids stay on so the ladybugs can come in. You know, this is all about getting yourself a stronger and then therefore a healthier tree down the road by letting it withstand in the elements. Just like us as humans, we're better, we live longer if we're stressed. If we actually eat less, if we fast, if we exercise very strenuously, if we expose ourselves to cooler temperatures, we cold stress, we heat stress in the sauna, we will live longer. Um, it's the same thing with these plants. They become stronger. In fact, if you water stress a fruit tree, you actually have a taste of your fruit. So in my opinion, we're building character here, guys. We're building character for the future. This is something that I think a lot of people will either overfeed their trees, they overwater their trees, and they just in general baby their trees. And if you're one of those people that did that, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? It's just a difference of thinking. You know, I just disagree with, the, with your methodology. That's all it is. But if you're one of those people, you have to just say to yourself, all right, well, I'm gonna be doing something different with my trees because you don't wanna really leave these out here during those cold temperatures. You know, if you've really babied them, you overwatered them, you gave them lots of food, they have lots of unlignified growth, and I wish I could get out here and show you guys. This is actually some of it right down here. Actually, we can just see it from inside the sunroom. But you can see that growth here. This is on a Violet de Bordeaux fig. And this fig fruited for me, finished fruiting, and the energy got um, freed, it got freed up. So the energy increased because we harvested a lot of these fruits and then it put out this new branch. And this new branch, you could tell, is not lignified. It's hardened, right? It's not real flexible. I can't bend it very easily. However, it's not hardened up, or it's not, it's not lignified up. It's not brown, it's still green. Because it's so green, this branch right here, getting hit by a 22 degree low, is probably gonna take a little bit of damage. It's not gonna be ideal. This is not something you wanna sell to somebody or trade to somebody. You know, you don't wanna take cuttings from that. You wanna just leave it on the tree and let it do its thing. Or prune it out completely. You know, um, a lot of people, again, that baby their trees, they're gonna have these trees that have all kinds of growth just like that, that we just saw on the Violet de Bordeaux. So they're gonna have all this growth that's very susceptible to cooler temperatures. And you're gonna have to say to yourself, all right, well, this is a different, this is a different scenario, you know? Not everyone, I can't give all of you guys the same advice for everybody, right? Everybody has a different yard, a different technique, a different way of doing things. And if you have that green growth that's not lignified up, I would very strongly suggest coming in here and taking cuttings off of that really green branch that we just showed you guys, or not, not doing anything to it. You know, not selling them, not trading them. That's up to you. Um, but you know, that's something you have to worry 
you know, that's like the one thing here is that, yeah, our roots are not gonna take damage at around 15, 14 degrees. But if we have some branches that aren't lignified up, they are gonna take some damage. And you, that's just something you have to have in your mind, right? This is something that we talked about a while ago. We talked about this like three months ago and I told you guys, this is why you should be worrying about this lignification process now. Because three months na from now, when we get our first frost, you're gonna be regretting it. You're gonna have all this growth that's not lignified. You're not gonna be able to do anything with it. It's a waste of time. Um, you know, it's just not great for the tree during the dormancy process. So um, that's kind of what I want to leave you guys with. We're going to create a nice little, we did create a, a blog post on figboss.com. Um, just go there, check that out. That legitimately has even more detailed information than what I talked about in this video. I think it's just easier to be more concise in that, um, in, in the form of writing rather than talking to you guys. But um, That'll really break down my whole point of view on this whole topic. And you can make a decision for yourself based off where you live and what your trees look like and what it, you know, it is that you need to do for your trees. So we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Take care and uh, I'll catch you all later.